is a billet compressor wheel and it comes out of a turbo that you find in a McLaren 720S just like the one behind me. It's light and it's strong and it's one of loads of different materials McLaren and manufacturers like it use to make sure the cars go fast and don't weigh very much including carbon fiber. In the car behind me there's a carbon fiber mono cage, the big box that people sit in. Essentially people refer to it as a monocoque chassis. So what we're going to talk about today is monocoques. What are they? Why are they good? And what do they do? So what is a monocoque then? Well essentially it's a shell. A shell that does all the heavy lifting when it comes to structural strength and support. An egg for example is a monocoque, a single piece of material that keeps its contents safe. So far so simple. As far as transportation goes, well, monocoques are first looked at for boats, which kind of makes sense. One big, unbroken piece of material to keep water out and people in. A little later on, wooden monocoques were looked at for aeroplanes. Again, kind of makes sense with the whole aerodynamics thing. Later on, though, metal was explored, but only once a suitably strong alloy had been discovered. But we're here to talk about cars, and this is where it gets tricky, because there's what most people think of as a monocoque, and what is actually a monocoque. There is a difference, and it's a big one. So let's take a look at some firsts, shall we? So what about monocoques and cars? Well, the first race car to be credited with having a monocoque is actually 1962's Lotus 25. In 1981, McLaren came out with the MP4-1. That was the first carbon fibre monocoque. As far as road cars go, there were a few credited with having them in the late 80s and early 90s, but what about the first ever monocoque road car? That honour falls to the 1922 Lancia Lambda. Except it sort of is a monocoque and sort of isn't. And this is where it gets quite confusing. It's time to get technical. At the advent of the car, there was one way to build them. The same way horse-drawn carriages were built. A frame at the base, then a body on top. Nowadays though, while some are, most cars aren't built like that at all. It's all about the unibody. And before we go on, yes, there are many other ways of building cars, but to list them all would make this a several year long epic. Neither you nor I have the time. Or the energy. A unibody combines a car's chassis and its frame to create a strong central structure from which other bits of car can be hung off to create a complete vehicle. So far, so good. Technology came around in the early 1900s and well, it was met with some resistance. People thought that it wouldn't, it wouldn't go down as well as the way we used to make cars. Citroen was one of the first people to use it in Europe and well, there were haters. So to prove them wrong, they pushed one off a cliff to show how strong it was. Brave, very, very brave. What does this all mean then? That cars that say they have monocoques don't? Well, no. What it means that a huge number of cars do have monocoque passenger cells like the shiny, shiny McLaren, but isn't an actual monocoque itself. And those cells are part of a unibody construction to which things like subframes can be added to. <laughs> The monocage in this here McLaren is here to serve two main purposes, other obviously than stopping passenger and driver from falling out of the bottom of the car. The first, it's kind of a passive safety system. So should McLaren meet tree, the people inside will be kept safe. It's big and it's strong. The second, well, there's a lot of physics going on here. There's a four litre V8 in the back and you can brake really hard and you can steer really hard and that's gonna create you know, physics, chassis flex, all things like that. But because there is a big, strong, single piece of carbon slap bang in the middle, there's no flexing here, which is good. It creates a brilliant handling car. It's fantastic. Oh, and there is one more teeny tiny purpose. That is, you know, to hang other bits of car off it so you can have a complete car with an engine in it.
You'd expect the carbon fiber monocoque cells to be limited to big, expensive, fast cars, but as carbon fiber composites become more effective, they're working their way to cars that normal people can afford. The woeful Alfa Romeo 4C, for example, has one, and the brilliant BMW i3 uses a cell to keep its passengers safe. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that most cars that we think are monocoques actually aren't, because that would mean its skin or shell would take care of the car's structural integrity without any supporting structures on the inside. But we've learned that lots of cars come with monocoque passenger cells, basically to keep people and stuff safe and other structures strong. Lovely. Now I need to lie down because engineering makes my brain hurt. Brilliant. <laughs>